Hello YouTube and welcome back to What the Math Chapter 9 Probability. Today we're talking about Venn diagrams and using probability with Venn diagrams. So let's look at an example just to get on with it and make it super super clear. And let's take a look at example 20, example 20 from page 286. And here, this is what it says. Venn diagram alongside represents the set of you of all children in class. Each dot represents a student. The event E shows all those students with blue eyes. Determine, determine the probability that a randomly selected child is A, has blue eyes, or B, does not have blue eyes. It's a pretty simple question, but we're going to assume that you forgot how to draw Venn diagrams and draw one from scratch. So first step, always start with a rectangle. Make it look like a little bit more rectangular than my rectangle. Also mark it as U. This is a set U of all possible numbers that you have. Then we have one circle on the inside. So we're going to put it in the middle. And this circle is called E. Or I guess I's. Should be B, I guess. But it's going to be E. So E is all students with blue eyes. We have a total of eight students on the inside. So we're going to mark it as eight. And then we have not E on the outside. And this is our students without blue eyes. And there are 15 students with, without the blue eyes. So we're going to put it 15 right here. And that's really it. So this is our Venn diagram. Now we just have to solve this question. So to solve this question, it works a little bit different from the regular Venn diagrams because here we're looking at probability. So we're actually going to be dividing by the total number of students. And first of all, we need to find our set U. So uh, we're going to use Venn diagram notation for this. So what is the number of all numbers in set U in, in the universal set? And the total number is 8 plus 15, which is 23. So there's totally 23 students in this class. Now, what is the number of E? Well, it's 8. Number of E is 15. So how do we find a probability here? Well, we're looking for a probability of having blue eyes. So what is the probability of E? Probability of E equals to number E, so number of all students with blue eyes, divided by total number of students, divided by um, N of U. So what this means is essentially 8 divided by 23. And that will be our answer. I'm going to, you have to use the calculator for this. And the answer is 0.348. And just remember to always try to put three significant figures because that's the IB notation. Um, all right, so that's the answer for the first example. Let's take a look at another example that's a little bit more challenging and see if we can do it as well. And let's take a look at example 21 from the next page. Here the question is, in a class of 30 students, 19 study physics, 17 study chemistry, 15 study both of these subjects. And what you need to do is display this information on a Venn diagram and hence determine the probability that a randomly selected class member studies any of these questions. Okay, um, so first step, let's make a Venn diagram. We're going to start with a universal set, make a rectangle. Hopefully it's going to look a little bit more rectangular than the last time. Well, I tried my best. And now we have two, <clears throat> two circles here. First circle is physics. We're going to call it P. Second circle is chemistry. And it's not a circle, and it's called C. And so what we're looking at is, we're going to try to fill in the Venn diagram before we start anything. So class of 30 students, so U total and U, I'm going to write on the bottom, N of U is 30. And this N of U will be using to find probability later. Um, now, we don't really know what N of P or N of C is yet. And we don't even need, we don't even maybe not need it. So we're not going to calculate it yet, but we are going to start filling the Venn diagram. Um, first step, if you remember Venn diagrams, you always start filling in the diagram with the both, the crossing. In other words, with this part, this part come, this part right here comes first. And here the answer is 15. So in between the circles, the number is 15 for students who study both of these subjects. So this is, this is when you say P and C. It's, and it's actually one of the questions right here, both subjects, P and C. So here, this is what it would look like, P and C. And we're looking for a probability of this. 
Now, how do we find it? Well, it's easy. It's 15 divided by 30. Or if I, if I were to write this out, I'm going to write it out right here. So this is question A. So what is the chance for P? I should have used a different letter because now we have two P's. This is probably probability and this is physics. Uh, P or C. And the probability here is N P of C divided by n total or n u in other words it's 15 divided by 30 and so the answer is 0.5 so it's 0.5 probability or 50 percent chance or uh, one out of two probability of being in both of these subjects so that question was pretty easy now let's look at the other questions and i think for the other questions we actually have to find what is p what is c and what is the um, universal set leftovers I shouldn't have called them leftovers. They're students, they're still people. Okay, um, so here we know that this is 15 and we know that 19 study physics. So this big circle, total circle is 19 and here we have 15, so what's left? Well, four, four is left, okay? So this is not 19, this is actually only four because four plus 15 will give us 19. Same thing for chemistry, 17 in total, leftover is two. So two students study chemistry, four study physics, 15 study both. And whatever is left out of 30 students, we put in here. So four plus 15 plus two will give us 21. And we have total 30 students. That means that here we have nine left because nine plus 21 will give us 30, it will give us 30 students. And so we can now try to answer question B. And the question B is this at least one of these subjects. So it means that either P or C or both. In Venn diagram format, it's written as P or C, okay, P or C. So what is probability of P or C? And this one is basically, you're adding all of these together and dividing them by total number. So it's number P or C divided by number of universal set. And here it's four plus 15 plus two. So it's total number of students studying any one of those classes, including two classes, because this is not a, um, if you remember Venn diagrams, this is not an exclusive disjunction. This is actually an inclusive disjunction. So it's 21 divided by 30. And I'm going to cheat to use my calculator here. And the answer is 0.7. So 70% chance. And this was question B. All right, so question B is finished. Let's look at question C. Question C is relatively easy. So physics, but not chemistry. Physics, but not chemistry. If you look at the Venn diagram, um, essentially what we're looking at is not chemistry. So just physics. And that's relatively easy because there's only one number here, four. So for question C, I'm gonna do it right here, question C. 4 divided by 30, which will give us approximately, I believe it's approximately 0.133 or 13%. And that's the answer to question C. Okay, so two questions left. Let's look at question D. And question D asks us to find exactly one of these subjects. Exactly one of these subjects. What does this word mean? And it means, so either P or C, but not both, not both. So this is exactly what we were talking about before. This is a uh, an exclusive disjunction. So it's sort of this, exactly um, exactly one, but not two. Um, from truth tables, this is the one where you had either one or the other, but not both. All right, so let's take a look at this. So what are we looking at? We're looking at either four or two, but not 15. Okay, so four plus two then. So uh, to answer this question, we're going to do what is the number of P or C, but not both, divided by total universal set? It's four plus two, which is six, divided by 30. And the answer is, I believe it's 0.20. I, I don't even have to use a calculator for this because I think it's one fifth, which is 0.20. And so that's the answer to question D. So 20% chance that uh, at least uh, so if you pick a student, exactly one of the subjects, um, they will be studying that, but not both subjects. And the last question is this, neither subject, neither subject. Well, that's really easy because 
we already know what needed subject is because it's actually right here. So that's 9 out of 30 for question E. Question E right here, so 9 out of 30 or 0.3. So 0.3 or 30% chance that uh, this person that you randomly select will not be studying either subject. So, okay, so that's how you do probability using Venn diagrams. I think uh, the important part here is to always remember to, to actually make the Venn diagram first. So this should always be a step number one, even before you read the questions. Before you read the questions, make your Venn diagram, make sure you um, fill in all of the values. And after this, when this is complete, you can start looking at the questions and trying to understand what you're asking. So uh, make sure you understand what at least one means, exactly one, um, one but not the other, neither and both. So these are these are very common questions. Okay, so that's it for Venn diagrams. Thank you for watching and good luck to you. Bye bye.